Welcome back, guys. You're listening to Rock and Roll Highway once again with Andy Baker. And every Tuesday night we're here playing the hits and memories. And as always, it's all about having some great memories, some music that we'll never forget. And uh, I just try and keep them alive as a musician myself, as you all know. And I've got a special guest with me tonight. I've got Tony Romerall, who was from the band Autumn. And they were around in the late 60s and 70s. And we'll have a bit of a chat about this uh, new Ted Mulry tribute album. It's fantastic. I've been listening to it today. And I'll just get Tony happening. You there, Tony? I certainly am. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Good, buddy. How are you? Pretty good. Now, um, this CD, mate, it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, for all the Ted Mulry fans who'd been looking for something after his death, um, I think this really is going to put him back on the map uh, for, you know, like in a remembrance way. Could you tell us a little bit about it? About the album? Yeah, and how it all came about. Yeah, basically... Um, it, it, the bulk of this album is um, has been re-recorded from Ted's last solo album called This Time, which was released on an independent label, but uh, really didn't uh, get out to the public the way it should have. And um, I spent a lot of time with Ted in his final months before he passed, and um, we talked about the album a lot. And um, somewhere along the line, I, I made a promise to him that uh, if I got a chance, I would do something about that and get it back out onto the into the public eye. And uh, took me 11 years um, and then I started uh, to study a bachelor degree in audio production and um, as my project for that degree I started uh, recording the album and um, got it to the point where it was ready to finish and once I got my degree I, I spent about another six months to put it all together and uh, this is the end result. And it's a good one at that I must say. Thank you. Look, um, the other thing I was going to ask you was, with the selection of musos, did you handpick them yourself, or did they sort of... Absolutely. Well, uh, yes, I mean, I handpicked them. Um, I used uh, a lot more musicians and singers that are on the actual album. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody that's not on the album, they're, they're not there um, because of their playing. It's purely I, I had a vision for each song, how I wanted it to sound, and um, I just kept going until I got the, the people I... I needed um for the album but yes i pretty much handpicked the uh, the um the musicians i was living in brisbane at the time and uh i got a lot of help from people who recommended players and um once i actually got the drummer a wonderful drummer in brisbane called mark henman mm -hmm. um he he goes out with um bernard fanning when bernard tours oh fantastic yeah. um and i got on to him and through him um you know he introduced me to players that he worked with and um and then through other other people, um, I had some some people. The bass player Harry Bruce, who I've known since the uh, mid '60s. Actually, I played uh, Harry's uh, plugged his uh, new CD the last few weeks. Mm, yes, he gave me a copy of that, and it's fantastic. It is, isn't it? It's great. Put it together in five weeks. An amazing job. See, so that's the reason why these shows, that's why I come in as a muso and do this show, because we've got to get this music out there. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, there's no chance of it ever being on commercial radio, and it's just not fair really to to see what we've had in this country and yourself of course being the lead singer of autumn uh, yeah that, i mean that was a long time ago but it, it you know okay. it, it's lovely that um music from that era is you know there are still people around who are prepared to put it out there and and not let it get lost in the um in history <laughs> fantastic and peter couples yep how Pete. did you get a get a hold of him to do that track uh, pete's him? a brisbane boy he's yep. up in brisbane and um I knew he was in Brisbane because he'd, he'd been working around quite a bit and I hadn't had a chance to catch up to him, but um, once I sort of sat down and listened to all the songs, the particular song he did, I gave him a, a choice of a few, but I hoped he picked the one that he did, which is called What You Say, and uh, he did. I asked him if he wanted to do it and he just stepped up straight away and um, just did an incredible soulful performance That's on that beautiful. song. That's beautiful. I just, I'll be honest, I haven't stopped playing it. <laughs> oh, he did. I, I, I love it. I, I don't get sick of it either. I play oh. in the car all the time. I mean, you know, quite a number of tracks on there I just keep playing over and over, but Pete, Pete did an awesome job. But she, my missus walked in from work and uh, she heard it in the background and she said, wow, how good's that? Who's that? And I told her about it. She <laughs> said, oh, you've got to do me a copy of that for the car. <laughs> and that particular song too, you'll, um, uh, Timmy Gaze plays uh, guitar on that and he Excellent. just rips a soul, soulful it performance is. as well. Mate, fantastic. And... Um, with his uh, concerts that he did, those um, 
last few concerts when all the different guys got together as yes, a tribute to the it? Benefit concert. Yep. The Benefit concert. That was, there was two, I think, wasn't there? Uh, it was two nights in a row. So That's many, right. so many bands uh, put their hand up that they ended up with a complete uh, two nights. Um, with about, oh, God knows how many bands. It was everybody from the 70s and 80s, um, even 60s, um, plus a few, um, you know, con uh, contemporaries. So, what was that? Was called Gimme Ted? Gimme it? Ted, yes. Yeah. There, there is a, a double DVD of it, in actual fact. And did you perform on that as well? Yes, we put Autumn back together as much as we could. Yeah. Um, there was one, two, three, uh, three of us originals and um got a few um uh, side players in um radiators um that was when they first got back together uh, the master's apprentices yes thorpey and the boys from in excess yeah. got up and oh, it was just amazing absolutely amazing fantastic now i was going to ask you i was thinking about it on the way up here tonight when we decided we we're going to eat you online mm. have a bit of a chat um you knowing ted really well as you did yes just a little insight for the people listening out there, because I know I get a lot of musos that listen in, because we all love Ted. Um, towards the end there, what mm. was his philosophy in life, and how was he looking at, at his songs and what he'd done in his career? Um, look, he, he looked. He always looked back, um, you know, um, uh, back on his music and loved. Mm. I mean, he loved everything he did. But his philosophy in life was really, you know, um, I know I'm dying. Uh, you know, and um, I don't want to be babied. I want, you know, uh, people to um, treat me as normal. And, um, you know, the main thing that musically that he was uh, upset about, because like pretty much TMG and his early stuff, it's out there and it's been successful and everything else. But uh, he was just upset that, that it didn't, it wasn't enough effort put into getting that album out there. And I've got to say, the original album is, um, I didn't re-record it because I didn't like the original album. It just was cleaner for me to do it and, and put my own uh, production feel and, and ideas into the album but the original album is an unbelievable album incredibly recorded uh, great musicians um, recorded by and produced by uh, Herm Kovacs the drummer from TMG at his studio fantastic um, and mm. I think it was his disappointment he, he, he mm. had a very heavy disappointment that uh, that, that didn't happen because he, he I believe um, that it was his best work and so did he Mm. And so I'm trying, this, this whole album is about showing the world that the power of Ted's songwriting, that it's, you know, he always had it and it just got better and better. And, um, you know, he's the, the, the ultimate um, romantic ballad he writer. Is, isn't, yeah. You know, his, his lyrics, I don't think anybody can listen to his lyrics and not say at some stage in my life I've been through that. <laughs> I find that with um, Falling in Love Again. Oh. I mean, every time I hear that song, I've played it quite a few times. On You're the show. probably like me. I, I thought for many years that Ted wrote that, but uh, that was Vander and Young. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Oh. I was surprised too when I finally found out. Well, yeah, Vander and Young wrote that. That was one of the few uh, songs that he didn't write. God, they, uh, they, they're our Lennon and McCartney. <laughs> yeah, they've written they everything. They are. I bet you there's other songs that we don't even know about. <laughs> oh, of course. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I, from, I know for a fact that there's got to be at least another hundred demos that Ted's done over the years of songs that he never recorded that have been sitting around. The tape he gave me had 35 songs on it when he gave me um, the tape to pick a few songs from my EP. Mm -hmm. uh, it had about 35 songs and I gave it back to him so it, it's got to be laying around somewhere but I'm sure Albert's have plenty of demos as well. He was such a prolific writer yeah, beautiful. and an amazingly fine man, fine human being. Yeah, well, like I said, I only got to know him a couple of times, Had a, was having a beer with him and that, and he got up and sang with us. I can't remember actually what he sang, to be honest, because we're all in party mode in those Probably, days. Probably uh, <laughs> Stand By Me or one of those. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a couple of covers he did with us, I can't remember. Yeah. Actually, we, we went into a little bit, I think, of Jump In My Car. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he, he sort of bopped along with us, and we had a bit of fun with that. It was the same as one night we actually got Ross up to do um, Eagle Rock with us. Yeah. and uh, But look, it's all fun, and I mean... In the end, um, you know, we, uh, we leave this world and uh, the legacy of these great songs live on forever. So, Did what, you like the little intro? Yeah, I was going to ask you about it. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, that, what, what mm. that was is I wanted to get something of Ted on there and I just couldn't think of anything. And um, the three songs that I put on there as bonus tracks that Ted gave me were on a two-inch tape and I had that con uh, baked and converted to Pro Tools and remixed and had the songs remixed but when i was listening to the um the um transfers mm. after i'd recorded that another band i had a corporate band we did a demo and ted happened to walk into the studio
studio because it was at Herm's, um, Herm Kovacs' studio. And he said, oh, do you want me to do an intro for you? And we just went, oh, okay. So we just walked straight in and did his um, drunken, sort of the drunken intro. And I found it on there, so we sort of edited it a little bit and tidied it up, and um, I thought that's perfect for the way to introduce the album. So uh, I got a little bit of Ted's voice in there, even if he's not singing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. When I put it on, it was a, I don't think people expect it. No, and, and like <laughs> I, I'd, I'd had it sitting around for ages, and then it yeah. just hit me, and I thought, wow, what a, what a great idea. And uh, it turned out that way. Yeah, and by the way, my my um, mixing engineer and mastering engineers were just superb with the, the way they put all that stuff together too. Well, I must have got to compliment them on the quality mm. of this CD. The actual production is sensational. Yeah, it is sensational. Oh, I, mean, I love there it. Is, yeah. There is a little backstory to that. The mm. the guy that mixed the album was my um, lecturer and my tutor. Well, there you go. And mentor at um, at college, and he picked. Um, this particular project um, for me to do my um, degree and he's been emotionally and completely um, involved in it from day one and he actually came to me and asked me if he could um, mix it and I just went you're you're in, invested in this up to the hilt so yeah go ahead and he just did an unbelievable job. Oh, I couldn't believe the quality of it actually I, not that I was going to um, not think it wasn't good quality but I put it through my good system at home and uh, I just thought, wow, listen to the quality of this. Mm. This is excellent. And there's one thing that is different than a lot of stuff. It's it's actually been uh, mastered for dynamic range, which means there's very little compression squashing it. And the whole idea of this album is that you can turn it up to 10 on in most speakers and um, you won't get that distortion. You can play it loud um, without getting any distortion and it can go to radio without being squashed like a lot of the pop records are. Yeah, I find that sometimes. I, I'll get a few CDs sent to me and uh, I think to myself, because I, I just play them, even I play them on the computer or something at home or whatever, I sort of think, well, I wonder how they're going to come across <laughs> on the radio because sometimes they're, they're just overproduced or I find the bass can be a bit too loud on them sometimes. Well, I, I think it's, yeah. a, you know, they call it the loudness wars, but they, mm. it, it's just a, a progression of compression that gets compressed at every stage and then it goes to radio and it has to be compressed for radio so um, it just gets squashed further and further down but um, I'm glad you like the production it, it, it went beyond my what I, my expectations I, I'm, I'm blown away and uh, it's a beautiful album you know like the, it's just a perfect album with your lady and you're just sitting around like a perfect having a nice <laughs> yeah, meal yeah, I know what you mean. it's just got that real romantic um, like I said my missus heard one track and she said oh I love that it's a very uh, gentle, easy listening. Uh, I love it. I really do. That's not your saying, but I really do. I really. No, like well, thank thank you very much. It's it's nice to hear that because you mean you know I'm too close to it. It's hard for mm. me to judge whether it's good or bad. It's good to me because I did it. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's nice to hear that people you know do do feel it's it's good and, and understand what it's about, which is um, you know what I set out to do. Well, I'm definitely going to give it a good run tonight after we finish. Uh, yep. Just a couple more things. Yeah. Um, how can people get the, their hands on this CD? I know it's released on the 20th of March officially. How do, how do they go about that? Okay, um, you can either go, they can either go to uh, the website, which is Autumn Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, www.autumnrecords.com.au. That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. And there is a link to either um, Shop Now um, up on the top toolbar or there is links in there that will take you straight to my um, web store, my online store, um, and that it's still de dealt with by my distributor but you can order it and it, they'll make sure that you get it before the release date or on the release date anyway and you've got many other albums as well or is Do it that you've put on that site as well or is it just this one uh, no no, no. The, well this is I've, I've only just started autumn records R oh uh, yeah yep. and um this is the first release mm -hmm. but i do um i've had a few people on facebook ask me I, I, my next project is a um remastering of all the um chart record autumn hits oh that was going to be doing my an next. album because this year is the um 45th anniversary of yellow river so um wow i was only and i managed to make uh, to find all the uh, quarter inch master tapes so i can um um have it remastered fantastic which i'll probably go to gil matthews to have it done and uh who's the the, the man when yeah. it comes to remastering mm. and uh, yeah that that'll be sort of in the middle of the year sometime but um 
I've got two or three projects um, on the boil at the moment, so it could be a busy year. Um, so autumn, so autumn records is basically going to be a label, and you're going to have some new talent on that, or is it basically? <laughs> yes, there will be. I've yep. got two, uh, two, uh, one, one project in pre-production, and. Um, and um, another pro- another two projects that I'm talking to people about, um, and they'll be new new artists. So basically, what I want to do with the label, I mean, I didn't I didn't set out to do this to have mm. a label, but I figured it was the easiest way to have control over. That's it. Making sure this ended up being the, exactly the way I wanted. Mm-hmm. But now that I've got the label, um, you know, I'm just going to search for new, you know new fresh talent i won't say young or old because i don't believe that age should have any bearing on exactly. it exactly it's music and songs and whether people like it or not so i'll just look for people and um you know what i want to offer is after as you know after 40 odd years in the business you sort of, sort of learn that you get ripped off it pretty much every time you turn around so i want to make sure that people on my label um get a decent royalty rate and um my thing will be to make sure that they take control and, and keep possession of their own music. They don't have to sell it off. That's the big one, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah, and it can yeah, be done. Yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of people get caught up in that, and then, you know, years later, all the all the tragic stories you hear over the years from musos that we all knew, you know, it's been a big yeah. time, and then you hear the stories of real, what really went on behind the scenes. It's terrible. Uh, I, like, I laugh at, the, at, the, at, at what I got ripped off for. I mean, the, 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 today's value... It's in the millions. I mean, yeah, it, didn't, wow. it wasn't millions back in the 70s, but, mm. you know, when when you see what you could buy for what you got ripped off for, pretty serious money. But um, I just laugh at it now. I mean, you know, hey, I still, I've still i still got a great life, so that's I don't it. care. <laughs> that's it. Look, before we go, I was going to actually quickly ask you, but you answered it, because I had a few people asking me about Autumn mm-hmm. and if you were going to be releasing, re-releasing any of your material, like, like you just said before. Yep. Yeah, so that'll be happening. Yeah, that's definitely happening, yes. And with Autumn, at the time, um, just a little quick little insight on that band. Uh, so you did you guys go overseas? Did you tour much? What, what happened in those days? Well, basic, basically, you know, we'd been around since, like, 1968. Um, we happened, to, just very briefly, we um, entered the Battle of the Bands, the Holy's Battle of the Bands. Yeah, I remember a, that. <laughs> at a suburban place, yeah. and I just received a copy of a, a whole bunch of singles from England. One of them was Yellow River. We'd learnt it the week before. We went on stage, about 1,500 kids there. We start, went into the first sort of riff of Yellow River, and they all went nuts, nearly Beatlesque. Mm. And um, it, it just was maniacal and then we came off stage and these two guys came up and said we want to record you can can you be in the studio tomorrow <laughs> unbelievable uh we went in the studio recorded and they rushed just the tape they didn't even press it to single rushed it to 2sm and the next minute it's getting high rotation airplay and so we sort of got sucked into the pop scene as such we yeah. were more of a soul band but we got sucked into that and had a few hits and were known quite rightfully as just a lightweight pop band um, that had happened to be successful, but still lightweight. And I think that's right. Well, I, I played it earlier. Um, if you will, is the looking through the eyes of no, a looking through kid. the eyes. Yeah. I, you know, I'll be honest. Uh, I mean, I was born in '58. Yeah. And uh, I remember my because I was the youngest, and three of my brothers were mm. got into a lot of bands, and I always remember that being played in the house. And you know, my I think a few of my brothers were actually closet autumn fans. Well, yeah, you know, I, I, I've covered, I've actually played with guys that were uh, quite young back then, and, and they were closet autumn fans as well. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm a good friend. I'm actually good friends with also with Barry Smith from the Tan Cries. Oh yes, yes. And I've been to some of those debonair lunches in Melbourne that we have. And uh, mate, there's nothing better than just having a nice bottle of red. Oh yes. You know, and we just sit there, and I just sit back. And I'm off to I'm off to yeah. um, Donny Sutherland's Debonair's um, lunch in a week or two yeah. next week actually. Well, they're such fun because you just um, I, I just personally I love taking it in mm. and and I lo- like Bobby Bright. Um, oh, you see so much history. Well, they you know I remember talking to Bobby Bright and um, over a bottle of red actually exactly what happened <laughs> one night and uh, you know he was telling me these great stories how they they got spotted by Johnny O'Keefe. And he said, "I want, I want you guys. I've got to have them, you know." <laughs> and then I said, "What was he like?" And uh, I never had a chance to see him, but um, just the stories and everything. And I've, obviously, I've got my own for a later generation. Well, Absolutely, yeah. well, it's later to me, I think, but uh, it's not really. 
I'll be 57 uh, next week, actually. Oh, mate, just a youngster. <laughs> Spring chicken. Spring chicken. That's it, mate. Well, mate, it's been fantastic talking to you, Tony. You're, yeah, um, absolutely. It made it very relaxing and, and great chat. Yeah, and I'd love to, um, if you're ever in Melbourne, catch up over a, a red. Yeah, well, as I said, I, I'm probably coming to Melbourne um, in the next few weeks. Um, I've got some... Um, some other interviews that people want me to come down for so um yeah we'll definitely i'll let you know and we'll um do a something. red sounds great yeah yeah <laughs> well, well at our age we all, that's all we drink now oh well, then again not really no it, not really <laughs> it's a, it's excuse we get you know well red's good for my heart and uh good that's for what my doctor said <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've sort of uh, slowed down a lot but i still don't mind my old coronas here and there ah uh, mate when you when you like a good drink you 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 don't do yourself out of any anything exactly. in life. <laughs> exactly, mate. We've got to enjoy life. Well, look, once again, mate, I think what you've done with this album is sensational. Thank you, Andy. That's awesome. I love it. And I'm really going to be telling everyone to get it and buy it. Don't go to the website there and buy it. Because if, especially if you're a Ted Murray fan, I think you need to have this in your collection. Well, and also, the, you know, the photo, the photographic collection that um, Philip Morris, the rock photographer, um, gave me. Um, was just amazing. I mean, I just rang him and said, "Do you have any photos?" And next minute, he's you know giving me an incredible amount of photos, and they're all you know high resolution shots. Yeah, so as we're speaking, quite rare shots. You know, yeah. that probably wouldn't have been seen for the last thirty or thirty five, forty years. And the people get actually as we're talking, I've got the little cover, the little booklet that comes mm. with it. Yeah, it's got all the lyrics. Yep. And then you get these beautiful little photos in there. Yeah. Look at that! Wow. Yeah, that was when Teddy was a young, sweet boy. Fantastic, man. <laughs> uh, you can't beat a good little booklet as well. Well, look, wish you all the best success with Thanks, the um, yes. label, Autumn Records. And um, what can I say? We'll uh, we'll listen to it shortly, and we're going to enjoy it. So, Fantastic, mate. Well, listen, thank yep. you for the opportunity tonight to have a chat, and no um, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks again, Tony. We'll catch you, mate. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, guys, that was a fantastic little fun interview with Tony Romero from Autumn, the band Autumn, as we spoke about, going back in the late 60s, early 70s. Really enjoyed that, a lot of fun, and I'll be having lots more interviews coming up in the next few, three or four months, whatever. I'll get round to all that. But what we're going to do now is actually get to the CD, and it's called we Will, Will You Remember Me? A tribute to Ted Maori, songwriter. And Tony told you basically all about it. And proceeds also, some of the proceeds from this go to Support Act as well. So we'll get into it. And uh, what we're talking about, the intro, is pretty weird actually. And it's quite funny. You'll enjoy it. So let's sit back and enjoy the album. And I'll get back to you. You're listening to Rock and Roll Highway. I'll just go to one of our sponsors first. Cue it all up. And uh, yes, this is Rock and Roll Highway on 99.3, 3 and GFM. And it's always about classic hits and memories and people like Tony. Ladies and, la ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to a bunch of uh, fellas I met out in the car park five minutes ago. And they said that they're Australia's number one band, but I've heard they're all right. Anyway, would you make welcome? Ladies and, ladies, will you shut up? It was a night 
Now playing better music variety, Energy FM 105.5.